Returning back to the realm of kaijus, this time we're going to be talking about... This guy again. Gamera here is from the newly released series Gamera Reaper, from which Gamera acts as the guardian of the universe and fights off opposing kaijus which makes the series entertaining for only the last parts of every episode. As the human characters, especially the children, are annoying as hell and to quote, I think I wanted him to kill the kids. Uh, and rather than focusing on Gamera, fucking kids. Yeah, two, not fucking kids, but <laughs> the fucking yeah, kids. Personal feelings aside, Gamera here, just like the previous versions of Gamera, is wonderfully portrayed as Bandai and to machinations, when backed by Kadokawa, seems to have sold an arm and a leg when producing said figures to the mass consumers. This is portrayed through the head as not only are the black high done with the shiny finish, but also the fact that the head is accurate to the series, portraying the advancements that the SH Monster Arts line was able to accomplish compared to their early years. This is especially with the mouth as not only are the inner components meticulously detailed, but the teeth are also clearly separated, something the Toho back Godzilla figures aren't able to pull off. This is not mentioning the eyes as they are also meticulously detailed as they are seen looking forwards and possess a fierce aura, personifying Gamera's fiery nature. Talking about the neck, this is also beautifully portrayed as it is composed of multiple pieces with each of them being attached to a ball joint, which allows Gamera to turn and twist his neck but not at the cost of the skull as the skull works in conjunction with the flexible neck, signifying that this is a high quality figure indeed. Also, the neck is a little turtle or tech neck that people who don't touch grass and look at their phones too much like a voracious few will relate to. Look at the shell, the underbelly is meticulously detailed as well as being decently painted, although not as defined as the Kyoto Gamera. But a significant detail that differentiates the Reaper version is the blue turquoise panel lining on the abdomen that is more or less an attempt to replicate the blue energy effect. But a point to note is that unlike the previous camera or the Big G, the Rebirth camera has a belly that is bulged inwards, resulting in a bulky boy who seems to be more muscled and fat. And look at the back of the shell, unlike the somewhat flat and smooth shell of the Kodo camera, Rebirth camera possesses a rough, coarse, and irritating sharp shell which not only makes the little G a giga chat that portrays a fierce aura and moves away from the friendly child loving pedo image and to one more akin to the big G as portrayed through the spiky plates and a large mass that makes it seem impenetrable to even shotgun rounds. The arms are also a different breed as unlike the small and fledgling arms of both G's, the Reaper version is equipped with a pair of long and bulky arms which was intentionally designed as Gamera uses them as his main armaments and are mostly effective at manhandling enemy kaijus, similar to the manner utilized by Kong, as well as dealing with child molesters regardless of gender, ethnicity, or country. Truly a friend of all children. And just like the rest of the body, the arms are meticulously detailed as the individual scales are beautifully portrayed. But the big twist is that the inner parts of the arms, unlike the hard and rough scales are composed of a soft skin texture, making for a more diverse and dynamic figure. And moving to the hands, not only are they massive and bigger than those of monkeys, with the long and detailed armor covering the outer parts of the hands, while the inner parts are composed of your typical soft skin with the added palm lines, adding a bit of humanity to the little G. This is not mentioned in claws as not only are they longer than the previous versions of Gamera, but are also black and sharp, which alongside the hands are perfect for flapping, scratching, and punching hostiles, mechs, and kaijus. And the tail out of the Gamera roster is the longest, as well as when excited, can stand up hard and solid, and can <laughs> penetrate through anything. Wait. That sounded wrong. This is not mentioning the patterns embedded onto the little G as it possesses a somewhat vertebrae-esque pattern with no misalignments whatsoever, adding to Bandai's mastery regarding skull. This is in addition to the fact that the tail is composed of six pieces that offer a decent range of movement. Articulation section later. As explained previously, Gamera as being Kadokawa owned license which abides by the initial principles of the Monster Arts line where it isn't a single figure it's what you get out of the box but rather an abundance of additional pieces that aid in recreating Gamera's appearance on the screen. And I can say that Gamera comes with a buttload of accessories. And what is Gamera without his ulterior flight mode? So say it with me. Initiate transformation sequence, let's go!
Ooh. Oh, stinks. Mm. Oh. Huh, tail. Tail fell off. And here's Gamera and his doggy dogfighting mode. And when closely observing the flight mode, there are certain differences compared to the Kyoto Gamera, where the flippers are significantly longer alongside the fact that they seem to be highly armored in which the front section is covered in multiple rows of spiky armor, with the rear parts being composed of multiple edges. This all culminates in a closed hand with abnormally long nails that makes it somewhat hard to grab, and a perfect weapon in close quarters. And then there's the main body in which the luminous and green hue on the abdomen is absent alongside the hind legs being shrunk encased in an armadillo-esque armor instead of having a pair of rear flippers like the Kyoto Gamera. This is not mentioning the tail as unlike the Kyoto Gamera in which the tail is elongated during flight mode, the tail on the Rebirth Gamera is shrunk compared to what it was, making me wonder whether Gamera here invested too much into the flippers. And in order to replicate Gamera in its airborne mode, there is your stand which is composed of two separate pieces, the first of which is your translucent base that this time around is colored in clear blue. And then there's this actual stand that not only holds Gamera in which, unlike the Kyoto Gamera which came with a hand grip, the Rebirth version is accompanied by a bowl grip, most likely due to the inward bulged belly which only requires the owner to place Gamera rather than shoving it in, in which you have the little G in its aerial dogfighting mode in its full glory. And such mode allows Gamma to not only engage in air-to-air, -air, but also conduct the good old kamikaze run implemented by the Japanese and widely used in modern warfare. When regarding size, Gamma wasn't the tallest lad, with the Kyoto Gamma being overtowered by the likes of Godzilla and only towering over anime waifus and underaged minors. And the Rebirth version height-wise is no different either as the Gamma stands at 15 centimeters or 5.9 inches, but it seems to have gotten the good old American treatment as the width on this iteration of Gamera is massive and makes the Kyoto Gamera look minuscule in comparison. And here's Gamera next to Gumpla, Hyatt Toys, SH Figure Arts, Figma, SH Monsters Kyoto Gamera, and the SH Monsters Iris. When looking at what the turtle is able to pull off, just like the previous Kyoto Gamera, which was imbued with an abnormal amount of movement for a turtle, the Rebirth iteration was also bestowed with the same love and care, resulting in a bipedal turtle that can outdance the likes of the Big G and the Baba Yaga. The head is able to match an anti-aircraft gun due to the flexible neck, which is composed of four pieces, all joints included, for probably the best neck movement in the Monstars line. Body movement. The arms are an improvement over the Kyoto Gamma as not only are they sturdy and don't break apart for the most part, but also are composed of four separate pieces, ball joints included, resulting in a Gamma fighting more like a monkey rather than a turtle. The legs happen to be akin to those of the Kyoto Gamma, so nothing mind blowing, and the tail. So nice to drop in. So, regarding posability, better than John Wayne. Stole that from me. Kill that from me! So, here we are at last. The SH Monsters Gamera Reaper version is another home run by Bandai in their Gamera line, as most of the achievements are similar to those of the Kyoto version, where the beautifully rendered sculpt, the abundance in accessories, a surprising amount of articulation for Turtle, and enormous bulk of the figure, making the little G a fantastic addition to the Monsters line. And unlike the Iris figure, there aren't any drawbacks. 
facts that my degenerate weeaboo mind can roster up, truly highlighting the mastery at work. In doing so, if you're looking for a Gamera figure, which is a premium Bandai, I would highly recommend the Rebirth version to either fans of the Friend of All Children or figure collectors. With that said, I'm going to give the SH Monsters Rebirth version of Gamera a ranking of an A+.